In this video, let's take a look at a simple extrude and deal with the draft feature on applying draft to the outside of our part. Let's start by creating a new part using our mold part template, start a new sketch on our top plane, creating a center point rectangle that's 50 millimeters wide and 25 millimeters tall. Once we've created this sketch, we can extrude it 10 millimeters in the positive direction and hit OK. So now that we've created this extrude feature, we need to apply draft to those outside faces. On our features tab, we have a feature called draft that allows us to select faces, a pull direction, and apply draft to those faces. Once you open this feature, you'll notice that there's a manual and a draft expert option. Under manual, you can select three different types of draft, neutral plane, parting line, and step draft. Draft expert only allows you to use the neutral plane option. Because of that, we're only going to go over the manual options so you know how to apply the draft and what each option does. For neutral plane, you enter a draft angle, select a plane for the pull direction, either a planar face or a plane created in SOLIDWORKS, and then select the faces you wish to draft. Just like with other features, we're going to select this option, hit equals, go to our global variable draft, and OK that. Next, we want to select a neutral plane. In this case, I'm simply going to select the top of our part, and you'll notice that once that's done, we have a pull direction arrow. Now, this pull direction arrow can be reversed on the screen by selecting it or by toggling its direction next to your plane selection in your neutral plane box. Now we can select the faces we wish to draft. I'm going to select the outside four vertical walls of our part. There's also a face propagation option. This differs depending on the type of draft you're using. In this case, we have none, along tangent, along faces, inner faces, or outer faces. Now these will come into play when you're dealing with more complicated parts. In this case, we're going to simply select none for face propagation. Once we hit OK, you'll notice that the outside walls are now drafted downward. Now the draft is applied based on the template value of 3 degrees, the pull direction we gave it, and the outside faces that we selected. Now you'll notice if we roll back the feature tree, the outside walls were drafted based on this upper edge. Now this is because I selected this as our pull direction. We could also change this by using a different pull direction. For instance, if we, instead of using this face, we selected the top plane, hit OK, you notice that the outside faces are drafted in the same direction, but they're drafted outward from the bottom edge rather than inward from the top edge. So the pull direction and the location of that plane you have selected can have an effect on the determination of the shape and the size of your part. So if we were to go to tools and measure, our 50 millimeter wall is no longer 50 millimeters. It's now 51.0482. So if you need to control the shape and the size of your part, it's very important that you understand this. Let's go back into draft and take a look at what else we can do. We have a parting line option. In this case, we don't have a parting line on our part. We simply have edge selections. So to create a parting line, let's go back out. Let's delete our draft feature. Let's create a sketch on the front plane. Now for this sketch, I'm simply going to draw a line starting at the center point of one of my edges. Partway through this line, I'm going to draw some stepped sections that have some sort of angle to them. I'm not going to control this draft, but we're just going to make sure that these aren't vertical lines. Let's hit OK. Go to our Curves menu and create a split line. The split line we're going to allow to intersect all the external vertical faces that we're dealing with applying draft to. So you'll notice this is basically split the outside faces of our part, but it's still one solid part. Now let's go back into our draft feature and let's select Parting Line. We still want to make sure that our draft angle is equal to our global variable. And this is very important whenever you're dealing with these molded parts and you've set up a mold template. You want to make sure that all of the draft angles, the wall thicknesses, and all those different variables you work so hard to set up are applied and linked to your parts. Our direction of pull, let's go ahead and just select the top plane. And now we can select parting lines. So in this case, I want to select the parting line all the way around my part. We can manually make this selection because there is no tangency between these edges. 
Now we have several different options here. You'll notice that there are yellow arrows on the screen. Based on the edges we select, for instance, edge 12 is this end edge, we select other face, it's gonna reverse the direction. This is gonna determine the direction that your draft is being pulled. Because we've selected parting line, it's actually going to be drafting just this upper section for us. Let's hit okay and see what happens. So you'll notice that we've drafted the part and the sections where we had the jog in our split line are drafted as well. So this is a good way to create draft on a part that maybe has a complicated edge on it. So let's delete this draft and let's take a look at the last option we have, creating a step draft. Once you select step draft, you have two different options, tapered and perpendicular. And we'll go over both of these individually. To better see these options, I'm gonna create a larger draft angle. I'm gonna go up to 10 degrees. Again, we're gonna select our top plane as our pull direction. And for parting lines, I'm only going to select this side. This will better help us understand what's going on when we apply these drafts. We have the other face option because we can reverse our draft. And again, we have face propagation option, but you'll notice that we only have the along tangent option. I'm still gonna leave our face propagation at none. Under our step draft, we have tapered step selected, so let's okay this and see what happens. With our tapered step option, if we look at this from our front plane, you'll notice that we've not only created a draft in the vertical pull direction, but we've also created a draft coming from the side face. We go back into our draft option, and instead of tapered steps like perpendicular, hit OK. You notice that as we look at this from the side, we haven't created that same draft. If we look at it from the top, all of our faces have been drafted appropriately. So again, this is a great way to add draft to a complicated part that might have a parting line or maybe some intricate geometry where it might be a little bit difficult to do this in a single extrude step using the shell operation or even the thin wall.